His name's Billy, Billy the Butternut. What's up guys? So now that our summer has finished over here, I wanted to bring you along and share with you the entire results of the no dig garden bed that I made back in spring and I planted corn, beans and gourds. I've been really impressed with how this garden has performed and I'll be sharing with you the whole start to finish process of growing and harvesting a whole bunch of food from this no dig garden bed that was really pretty easy to set up and maintain. I did make a previous video about the early stages of setting up this garden, but if you didn't see that, I basically started with a bare patch of ground and without doing any digging or tilling, I layered it with a whole bunch of organic matter. So I used things like straw, plant material that I had grown as a cover crop and chopped down. I also used coffee grounds, chicken manure, compost, and some seaweed and debris that were collected from the beach. This was all spread out in layers and then I finished it off by planting it up with corn plants that I grew from seed and then I interplanted that with beans and some interesting varieties of squashes and pumpkins. This combination of plants is known as the Three Sisters Method and it's a companion planting technique practiced by indigenous people of North America where the corn, beans and squash are all interplanted and they occupy a different niche and provide benefits to one another. So the corn provides an upright structure for the beans to climb up, the beans fix nitrogen in the soil and the pumpkins or squash create a living mulch that keeps the soil cool and moist and helps to prevent weeds. The squash leaves are also quite prickly, so it's said that they'll help to deter animals coming in and destroying your garden. So the plants took off and grew really well, and the only input from us after planting everything was just keeping it watered, and I also added a layer of straw just as a mulch to retain the moisture and help reduce the amount of watering we had to do. So two months after planting the corn, they've now developed the tassels on the top, which are the male parts that drop the pollen. And they've also developed the ears and the silks lower down, which is the female flower where the pollen needs to land. So corn are wind pollinated, so each one of these little silks or these little hairs connects to an individual corn kernel. So every silk has to actually have pollen land on it in order to grow a nice full cob of corn. So this is why I planted the corn as a block of plants, so that there's really good pollination. Otherwise, if you plant them in a line or something like that, your pollination might not be very good. And then you can end up with corn cobs that have some kernels missing from the cob. We've also got some pumpkins and gourds forming. I did plant some butternut squash and I've got these massive things here forming which don't really look exactly like the butternut squashes I've seen before. So I'm not sure what's going on there but we'll see what they end up doing later on. So we're another three weeks on and the pumpkin plants are scrambling up the corn plants and bursting out of the corn patch, doing their best to get as much sun as they can. The bottle gourds are putting out tons of these awesome white flowers and these are night blooming and they attract moths to pollinate them but they do seem to be open in the morning and evenings too. They're also producing lots of these really cool looking gourds and you can harvest these when they're young and use them a bit like courgette or zucchini but we're actually going to be leaving these on to fully mature because they end up going hollow and the skin turns into like a hard shell. It takes many many months for it to get to that point but they basically turn into almost like a wood and then you can use them to make things like water bottles or bird houses or different utensils, things like that. I thought that would be something interesting and fun to try, but I will look at doing a separate video all about bottle gourds sometime in the future. We've also got these green pumpkins down here. There's quite a few forming and they're actually starting to turn orange now. They will eventually turn fully orange. Much like their name, they're quite a sweet pumpkin and they're fairly small as well. They don't grow too big. We've got this sunflower here as well, which is flowering. And this one was just a volunteer plant. It came up on its own and it is attracting quite a few insects. So hopefully those insects will then go on and start pollinating the beans that we have growing as well. As for the beans, I don't think they all germinated, but the ones that did are climbing up really nicely. And now they've reached the top and are putting out some flowers. Alright guys, so we're going to harvest the corn today and it's been just over three months since we planted the corn here and you can tell that they're ready because the silks have died back and turned brown. So let's rip one of these open and check that out. That looks so awesome. It's a really nice full cob of corn, a really beautiful colour, looks super tasty. I'm really stoked with that. So with sweet corn, it is best to eat the corn as soon as you've harvested it because that's when the sugars are their highest. As soon as you harvest them, those sugars start to turn to starch, which makes the flavor not as good. And the longer you leave it sitting around, the more of those sugars turn to starch. So although we are harvesting all of these today, we do plan to give quite a bit of it away. We'll eat some of it fresh and then whatever's left, we're gonna cut all of the kernels off the cobs and then put them in the freezer. So we've ended up with over 80 full-sized cobs of corn, which is awesome. 
And as well as that, a few dozen of these smaller ones, which were kind of just extra bonus ones that some of the plants produced. With these smaller ones, we've decided to go and share them with our sheep, so let's go and do that now. Okay. The small sugar pumpkins have been orange for a while now, so I'm going to go ahead and harvest these today. It's pretty cool to have grown all this extra food with pretty much no effort, just planting a plant in the middle of the corn in space that would otherwise be not utilised. So it was definitely worth chucking in a few of these plants to be able to get this extra harvest from the same space. This grey pumpkin came from a random seedling that sprouted in my compost bin and I transplanted in here, so a nice little bonus there as well. I'm finally getting around to chopping the corn plants down, so I'm just using these loppers and just cutting them down right at the base, and I'm just going to leave the root systems in there, and although they're quite sort of woody root systems, I'm not too worried, I'm just going to plant around them once I've layered a little bit more compost over the top. I'm just trying to keep this garden as low effort as possible, as well as the lowest amount of disturbance to the soil, so as those root systems eventually break down, they should just add those nutrients back into the ground, and in the meantime just provide extra food for the soil life. So there's still a few things left in the garden. We've got the bottle gourds and I've just piled these up here on the mulch and I'll probably leave these out here over the winter just to dry out and let the skins harden before making some sort of project out of them. There's also a few more grey pumpkins as well to harvest and of course the butternuts as well. Oh that's heavy. So these are the butternuts and I'm out of breath, but the one in the middle I think has fully ripened, but the two on the edges are still a bit green and stripy, so I don't think they've ripened. And I did plant butternut seeds and I asked you guys on Instagram like, are these butternuts? Because they are massive. And most people said that yes, they're butternuts, they're just big boys. So I don't know, let me know what you reckon down in the comments. But yeah, either way, stoked with this harvest and let me know what I should do with these ones. Should I just put them inside like in the sun to try and ripen them a bit more or should I just eat them because they probably won't last as long? I don't know, let me know. But anyway, a good harvest. So there was a couple of things with this garden that didn't do too well. One of them was this pumpkin here, this is called a Long Island Cheese and it's not called that because it tastes like cheese, it's because it looks like a cheese wheel. But this was the only one that we got off the plant, so I'm not too sure why it didn't do as well as the other pumpkins, but I will have another go with them next year because they're quite a cool looking pumpkin and they're a good long storage pumpkin as well. The other thing that didn't do too well was the beans and I think the reason for that was that we just ended up getting dried beans from it. It was a bit hard to get in amongst the corn plants to actually harvest any beans so we just let them fully dry on the plant which naturally means you don't get as many beans from your plants because you're not continuously harvesting them like you would if you're just getting fresh beans. But still it was good to have you know beans as a bit of an extra bonus but it wasn't something that we got a massive harvest from. Our plan for this garden now is to turn it into like an animal food garden. So we're just going to put a layer of compost over the top and direct sow into it with a whole bunch of vegetable seeds. So things like root vegetables, leafy greens, brassicas, all that type of thing to be able to feed to our sheep, our chickens, our turkeys and just give them a bit more variance in their diet and also become a little bit more self-sufficient in the animal food that we buy. We'll see how that goes. I think it'll be a lot of fun. So if you'd like to follow along on that process, then make sure you subscribe down below. Hope you enjoyed today's video and if you did make sure you give it a thumbs up and if you have any comments or questions then leave them down there too. But otherwise I hope you have a great rest of your day and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. I'll catch you later. This must be what it feels like having triplets. Oh, far out. No gym today.